Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris Olmy and we're here at Rascalicious Farms to play some Starters Order 6. So where we left off was just after the Kentucky Derby. So we decided just to run Grand Sahara on her own in it. Not put in Lock Journal or Hidden Beauty. So, you know, that worked out. It worked out two and a quarter from Felix the house cat. That puts us now in with a chance at a triple crown. So I have booked Grand Sahara in both those races. And uh, the first race of the day will be Grand Sahara in the Preakness Stakes. We've also got a race booked for Gamabo, Ninja Girl and Lock Journal which I think will probably do this video. We might run Sweet Treats because that then would leave us on the 11th with Crimson Star, Hidden Beauty and Grand Sahara maybe going for that third Triple Crown race. And uh, maybe that's the one she needs to follow in Crimson Star's footsteps and win the Triple Crown this season. So... I think that's where we're going to be. Everybody's just started breeding yesterday, so we're okay there. Without any further ado or too much pomp and circumstance, we're going to get right into the Preakness. And we are going to see exactly what she can do. Where is the Preakness? There it is. So Grand Sahara will be the favourite ahead of Cherokee Queen. That's a house, you know, Felix the House Cat, not too far away. We've raced against both those before. Patriotic Flame, uh, Artful Fox. So, not as well known a field. I am a little worried if Grand Sahara can get this distance. Everybody's going Cherokee Queen on this one. Everybody's going Cherokee Queen. So, okay, I mean, fourth in the Derby, and now we're going into this, and Cherokee Queen ran yesterday. I really hope she doesn't do too much because she shouldn't be able to run back-to-back -back races like that. Um, I really hope that the game does sort of punish horses for running that close together. I know it doesn't sometimes there, are, there is a slight bug in the game so yeah we're gonna keep an eye out for Cherokee Queen but let's get into things and they're off there we go so there's a while to go in this one there is a you now this is not the longest I think you know it's slightly shorter than the Derby but it you know it's long enough so you can see that Grand Sahara just in the edge of the picture in that fifth place now starting to make a little bit of move to keep with this leading pack. At the back of the field where a mascot takes up the rear with Crykneasy, Arby's Token, Radiantly, Artful Fox and the Cherokee Queen. They're all up at that part. War Party's there with them as is Mr. Determined. Distinct Vision off screen. Nibani now just fallen down to fifth as Grand Sahara is on the outside of this chasing pack of four. The Patriotic Flame on the inside, Nelson's Chief just by a head leading us out. And we're all chasing Felix the House Cat, the second place runner in that Kentucky Derby. The only horse to come within two and a half, three lengths of Grand Sahara. He's leading this one from the front all the way. Grand Sahara in beautiful position. Cannot get boxed in. Everything's going well. Two and a half furlongs. Patriotic Flames starting to make a move now. Getting into position itself. Grand Sahara comes in and starts to kick on as we cross the two furlong marker. Is there anyone up from the back? Cherokee Queen might be making a move. We're under one and a half furlongs. Coming up to the one furlong marker. And Grand Sahara is streaking away from the field. Felix the House Cat has got nothing. Nobody else is close to the pair of them. 
and this is going to be another salute, another Triple Crown race win, and Grand Sahara is two from two. We'll see what she can do at the Belmont. Can she break every other horse's heart? Can she capture the imagination of a nation? Will Grand Sahara become our second horse in two years to win the Triple Crown? Now, Cherokee Queen did come in second, but four and a half lengths back. Felix the House Cat down to fourth. Still an impressive run. You know, second and fourth in the Derby and Preakness. Cherokee Queen, fourth and second in the Derby and Preakness. So I, I've got the feeling that both of those will be at the Belmont Stakes. They've got to run. If they're finishing top four in both these races, I think they've got to run. Uh, I'll be quite happy to see them as my main line of competition. So Grand Sahara settled early, close up halfway, led inside one and a half furlongs out, and then went clear. Absolutely fantastic. Up to a 129 rating. I think the highest horse I've had in this save so far was a 134, I think. And I haven't had many over 130 or 130 itself even. I, I think we've had maybe four horses. So Grand Sahara could be joining that elite group of horses we've had in this sieve. The jockey says, I would expect the horse will stay further. That's music to my ears. I knew it can stay I know it's a 1-2-1-3 horse. I'm hoping the 1-4 Belmont Stakes will suit it. But we are off and running, guys. We are off and running. That is absolutely fantastic. 11 out of 11 wins now for Grand Sahara. 4 out of 4 this season. That's 3 Group 3s, 5 Group 1s. Starboard Bow and Sahara Lady, the breeding pair. And you can see... She's got that finish, she's got that extra speed, she's got cruising burst, she's got potential. She's got all the things that I really think I'm going to need. Battling qualities is the one thing that's very sort of scarce in this game. And uh, yeah, I'm not too worried about not having that right now. So... She could be in line to be a very nice horse, both racing this season, next season, in the breeding barn in the future. But ultimately, everything is focused now on her next race at the Belmont Park, the One Mile Four Belmont Stakes. That will be the final Triple Crown race. So I'm really hoping that she can get that done. And, you know, Crimson Star had a good career, won the Triple Crown. But they're both up to 129 ratings now. I know Crimson Star has been higher. It has been a 130 horse. And I know both... Uh, I think... I, th I think Stealthy Lioness was 132 at the highest. And I do believe that Starboard Princess, was, who is by the same sire as... Uh, as... Grand Sahara, I believe that was a 134 rated horse, so hopefully we will have a new leader on the save. I just skipped the entire day. I could see myself doing it and I stopped myself and I finished talking and then I still did it. I finished talking and gave myself the opportunity not to. I'm going to take a risk on Francesca, 1 mile 4. It's got a big reserve on it. Let's see people come in right over the reserve. People want this horse. It's got a chance of being a 1 cent, sort of a, a 70 to 80 potential horse, which is, you know, if it's got 80 potential or above, I will keep it. But, oh my, half... Ugh, yeah, not good. Not good at all. Really not good, so... And a muddy track, I didn't even really look at that. 
So Francesca Outgamabo. Actually, let's see. So she came third. Yeah, Gamabo needs to run at a mile. Okay, I've just noted that down. So interesting to see that she can she can run quite well when she wants to. But we need to get her up to a mile. We really do need to get her up to a mile. So okay. So we have got three more races that'll leave us the triple header at Belmont Park on the eleventh. And then a week later at Lone Star Park we'll see Endless Shadows fourth race. So the third round of the Triple Crown in the next video. But we're gonna continue things here with a race for Ninja Girl in a grade three. And then also Lock Journal trying to prove what a good horse he can be. And my other two year old male, Sweet Treats. So we got a couple of Colts in there you've got a two-year-old three-year-old coat we've got a two-year-old filly let's just see is there anything that i cannot ignore at the auction really isn't okay so francesca there's there's bids and let's get out of that how much did she sell for Ooh. Yeah, I lost about a quarter of a million there. Okay, so we're a couple of days late on the breeding side. Hidden recipe and chrome mine looks like a nice one. Why not? Retriever and quarter. No. There we go, a mile two and laid back. Beltine. Just trying to uh, test things out in terms of randomly selecting and also picking very carefully. Because normally we get about six good falls per season uh, that I want to keep. And I might then whittle that down to three or four by the time the season actually gets fully underway. So, we're going to see what it's like when it's a little bit more random. Let's get Ninja Girls Race off and running. So, she is second favourite behind Cape to Rio, who is carrying three more pounds, is six rating points less. Um, it's unbeaten, it's won both of its races, but that's only an allowance and a maiden, I mean... That's nothing. Yeah, that that's nothing. So this could be the time when Ninja Girl actually steps up. Cape to Rio is the favourite. And it is the fancied horse. So we'll have to keep an eye on that one just to see. But I do believe Ninja Girl here can wrap up a grade 3 win here over 7 furlongs. So Cape to Rio is in that red and grey check. So on the inside and that's a nice that's a nice start the entire field here getting away Nurai is going towards the front we got Cape de Rio and Singletree just behind Kaigan and Ninja Girl there right in the thick of that with growth stock and coming on at the rear of the field and uh, not too distant but Unless they're closers, then they're going to have to do a lot of work to move into position here. So, we've still got the pack of four chasing down Nurai. Four furlongs left to go. Starting to get around this uh, long bend now. See what horses make their moves on the bend, if any. Ninja Girl does seem to be getting into position, but... Could easily get boxed in on current positioning. Falling back a little. Two furlongs to go. Anyone making a move? Anyone going to go for this? Kaigan is going to go out fairly slowly. Cape to Rio is coming in now. Ninja Girl with a furlong to go. I believe didn't have the racing position. And doesn't really seem to have too much either here. 
And I don't know what that move to the outside of the track was at the end. So that's a third place. Um, okay. Beginning to pick up. So let me make a note of that. Again, it seems like Ninja Girl wants to be run at a mile. Same as Gamabo. They both place third in a grade three. Not the best so far then. So two third place, but of course we did get the Preakness out of the way first of all with Grand Zahara. So we're still finding our feet with our two-year-old fillies, but the three-year-old fillies are winning races. So that boards well. And now we're back to three-year-old. This time our Colt Lock Journal. Two second places are the only times he has not won his race. He is the top rated. He is three pounds lighter than his nearest two challengers in terms of rating. And on the same weight, he is nine rating points better than Fantastic Day. So, this is a race Lock Journal should win. Let's have a look at the tipsters. Two of them going for Lock Journal. Let's get into this race then and see can Lock Journal make it four podiums in a row? Can we start and end with wins? Can we win, get a couple of third places at a, a slightly less distance than the horse is like? But then can we get back onto winning ways with Lock Journal to really impress us? So, not a large field, only seven horses in this one. That slight turn now onto the back stretch. Was this well is this actually the the home stretch there we go there's the there's the start finish post so one small round the track not a very large track obviously we've got grass hopping a fantastic day at the back equitable just ahead bmb's pulpit is in fourth place lock journal just in picture on third on the outside decent racing line at the moment Phone for Champagne is in second, holding that inner rail. And Trip Permit is out ahead. But probably going to get caught fairly decently. B&B's Pulpit looks to be making a move up in towards third place. Lock Journal is coming in for second place. Everybody seems to be stepping up ready for the start of this turn. This long left-hand turn. As we're just two and a half furlongs from the finish. We have got Trip Permit, then Lock Journal, Form for Champagne, B&B's Pulpit, Equitable and Grasshopping, just trading places there at the back of the field with Fantastic Day. We have got one furlong left, and Lock Journal made its move. Cannot seem to get past Trip Permit right now is going to have to kick on in the last half furlong. But here comes for, for, Form for Champagne and and b and B's Pulpit. We got third? I thought maybe we'd be able to fight with one of those at the line, but it looks like Form for Champagne might have just... Oh, just got ahead of b and B's Pulpit and by a nose over Lock Journal. So that's another third. Look at that, a short head and a head. That's not good. That is not good. I'm I'm not happy with that. We win grade ones at this distance, but a grade two? Yeah, no. Ouch. So that's kind of a disappointing one. I really wanted to get back to winning ways and sort of finish up with a win as well. But uh, Grand Sahara opens up with a win. Then we got Gamabo, Ninja Girl. A furlong shorter than they'd like winning, uh, you know, to keep them from winning grade threes. And then Lock Journal at his distance. Just couldn't get the job done. Finishes third as well there. So all that we're really left with is Sweet Treats. Two wins in his three races today. What's Street Poe? No. 
Excitable and shorter than a mile. We don't want that. We do not want that. So yeah, won the maiden. Second in a grade three. Then won a grade three. We're dropping. Yeah, you know, we're keeping at five furlongs here for a, an allowance race. This should be another win. It's a bit of a nothing race, but if I can get sweet treats a little bit more sort of uh, ready for bigger races and just keep it winning races, confidence might be high, might develop more. That's kind of what I'm hoping with these little allowance races. So we'll see. Can sweet treats get us off with a we open with a win, we get a hat-trick of third place finishes. Do we go back to the win to see us off? Field of 11 is a decent field. I don't know any of these other horses, but we all seem to be ridden fairly similar there towards the front of the field. Four furlongs to go, starting this long turn, ready to race for home. Otea at the back with Royal Peculiar, Pro Daclid take cover, Richly Blended, Nightlight and Bayhead King are there just in picture behind Sweet Treats who's coming up the outside of Armiga and Adios my friend fading on the inside rail, Fonz is here leading out at the moment, it's Armiger and Sweet Treats making their moves for the front one and a half furlongs now, left to run, Fonz is coming back a late run here by Richie richly blended not going to be able to do anything sweet treats is fighting just getting ahead in second place Fonzis is fading sweet treats is coming through sweet treats is going to take it on the line we round off with a win first third 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 first not a bad day's rating uh racing not a bad day's racing but sweet treats picks up the win to sort of uh, send us off smiling just a little bit more than we would have been. I'm fairly happy with that run. I'm fairly happy with the win. Holds his 107 rating. And uh, his potential is full for the season, like 86. That is really nice for a two-year-old. I, I like anything 85 and above for a two-year-old. Because it means even if they don't gain any other unrealized potential... As a three-year-old, I can still look towards the Triple Chrome races. So Sweet Treats doesn't really have the distance for the Belmont, but could go in for the other two and do something. So unless we've got a, a real threat in all three races, Sweet Treat could be a really nice horse to try and pick up at least one or two of those, um, one or two of those races. So there we are. We're going to leave it here. We're going to be back in the next video for a triple head at Belmont Park. Crimson Star runs. Hidden Beauty runs. Most importantly, this year's Belmont is going to be coming up next. It is Grand Sahara, winner of the first two legs. Can she complete the Triple Crown? Can she follow in the footsteps of Crimson Star and of... Um, well, no, no, Starboard Princess didn't win the Triple Crown, did she? Because she won the the Derby, the Kentucky Derby and the Belmont, but Stealthy Lioness stole away the Preakness. So this could be our only, our second in this save to win the Triple Crown. So I hope you've enjoyed watching. I think we've got a good set of horses. They're not running as well as I'd thought, to be honest with you. I thought we were nailed on there for four wins out of five races today. We kind of got two distances slightly wrong, and I don't really know what happened to Lock Journal. But uh, next video, Crimson Star really does need to step up and show that he can still race and doesn't need to go into the breeding barn. Of course, Grand Sahara in the Belmont, and then Hidden Beauty. She's only ever lost one race before, and that was a second place to round off last season. Can she keep her unbeaten season going this year? Really impress us. An endless shadow, three from three this year. Can he be the unbeaten two-year-old that Sweet Treats, Gamabo, and Ninja Girl could not 
this season. So will Ender Shadow make it 4 from 4 in the Grade 3? Tune in, find out. That's coming up very soon. But until then, guys, thanks for watching. Share, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll see you back here very soon at Rascalicious Farms. Take care.